Ladies and gentlemen, a very good evening to you, and we welcome you to the beautiful Mont Blue Casino Resort and Spa here in Lake Tahoe, Nevada, as it's time for the featured bout of the evening, brought to you by Gary Shaw Productions in association with Romanza, Mont Blue, and Showtime. This bout coming away is sanctioned by the WBO, President Francisco Valcarcel, Supervisor Rudy Paz, along with the Nevada State Athletic Commission, the Chairman Skip Avancino Jr., Commissioners Dr. Tony Alamo, John Bailey, Joe W. Brown, and TJ Day, with the Executive Director Keith Kaiser. Our physicians at ringside, Dr. Stephen Brown, Dr. Damon Savala, Dr. Todd Chapman, and Dr. Jeff Davidson. And our timekeepers at the bell, also keeping count of the knockdowns, Jim Carpenter and Rose Thane. Introducing to you our three judges, scoring this bout from ringside. From Las Vegas, Nevada, Dwayne Ford. From Delray Beach, Florida, Michael Pernick. And from Gardnerville, Nevada, Doug Tucker. Introducing at this time our third man to the ring, our referee in charge, working in this, his 131st world title bout, Jay Nady. All right, fans, here we go with our main event of the evening, 12 rounds of boxing for the interim WBO featherweight championship of the world. And now, ladies and gentlemen in attendance, and boxing fans joining us around the world, Live from Mont Blue in Lake Tahoe, Nevada, it's showtime! <laughs> Introducing to you first on my left, he is fighting out of the blue corner, entering the ring wearing yellow trunks with red trim, joining us all the way from Bangkok, Thailand. He weighed in at 125 pounds, with a fine record of 24 wins and one defeat. He has 15 wins coming by way of knockout. Tonight, ladies and gentlemen, he is making his first attempt at a world title. Please welcome the WBO number one oh, ranked featherweight go. contender, oh, introducing uh, to a sack, His opponent across the ring on my right, fighting out of the red uh, corner, wearing white trunks with black trim, hailing from Mexico City, Distrito Federal, Mexico. He weighed in at a trim and ready 124 and one half pounds, with a record of 44 wins, three losses and one draw. He has 33 wins coming by way of knockout. Currently ranked the WBO number two world contender. Ladies and gentlemen, here is the former WBA and IBF unified featherweight champion of the world. Introducing Juan Manuel Marquez. Once again, a referee in charge, Jay Nady, now give instructions. Obey my commands. Good luck. Yeah. Touch close. Let's go to work. Well, the excitement meter definitely rises when Marquez faces an aggressive opponent, and Zhang is not shy. Marquez, an Americanized Mexican fighter, historically a non aggressive counter puncher, a notoriously slow starter. Uh, Jan Dang. Will he come out free swinging and work for Manny Pacquiao versus Marquez? He's a rugged, awkward southpaw who can switch to orthodox. More of a pressure fighter than Marquez's last opponent, Chris John. And I got to tell you something now. The wind is really beginning to whip around more. And the skies are looking ominous. Yeah, we were concerned about rain. And uh, right now there is the possibility of that. So that impacts things. But Jan Dang offers a lot of the problems that uh, Marquez has had from time to time. But in the last eight rounds against Pacquiao, he attacked very, very well. Some of the things I mentioned in the keys, using the jab, the overhand right, and moving his head, not being a stationary target. Beautiful quick combination by Marquez. Zhendang does have a habit at times of carrying his hands low. But as we pointed out, extremely fast hands, really dicks to the body. He can brawl, very self-assured. 
Well, we'll see if he has what it takes against uh, one of the most skilled guys to come out of Mexico in recent years. One of the big things, and we want to look at it uh, as this fight continues, Jan Dang tends to throw his right hook to the body and really dip over when he does it, leave himself wide open for an overhand right. And that, of course, is a great punch for uh, Marquez. So that's something to look for. And even though Marquez's career is a little on the precarious side right now, he cannot take Jan Dang lightly and look ahead to the really big names that he wants, like Pereira, Morales, Pacquiao. Uh, but he doesn't seem the type to do that. Wild well, miss there by Jan Dang. They're Marquez both, coming up short with the right. Steve, they are both throwing home run balls right now. And <laughs> I mean, they both just missed. Straight left from Jan Dang and overhand rights from Marquez. Do they know something we don't know? Maybe they're trying to get this thing over with fast <laughs> before they have to roll out the tarp. <laughs> you got your rain delay stories ready? I have many rain delay stories ready. Many, you know, this is a brother theme tonight. I can tell you some not so funny brother stories. Yeah, you know about every famous brother. Yeah, well. Yeah, when we were kids, my brother Al used to beat me up, and Marv would call the one side of the fair. That's how it all started. I know you'll get back to your room later and really <laughs> when you get that. <laughs> Round one continues. Listen on the inside. Jan Dang has not started quite as aggressively as we would have anticipated. I think part of that is he has a healthy respect for Marquez and that overhand. Oh, <laughs> combination by uh, Marquez and Jan Dang says, okay, show me more. Bring it on. Let's see what you got. That was a good straight right hand. You know, Marquez, one of the showing Marquez the left hand. That's what Pacquiao landed against him. Yeah, he's landed a few of those. Two, three good left hands. Yeah. hand by John Tang. Very willing to stand by right time frame with Marquez. On the horizon, here's what we were talking about. Some uh, heavy clouds, rain clouds. They were expecting some thunderstorms later here in the Lake Tahoe area. And let's hope it all holds off until after this fight. One of the weapons that lefties have used against uh, Marquez, including Pacquiao's the straight left, and that one just nicks the chin of uh, Marquez. And of course, it's the punch of choice when you're facing him. Oh. One, two, jump. One, two, jump. Okay, come back. Well, who okay. so, second okay. half. Let's go. Bobby Villaver uh, speaks English in the corner. The trainer, another corner person, then passes the information on to Zandank with hand signals, uh, often using numbers. Uh, Al, I would think that could get a little confusing. We've seen that before in some corners, and uh, yeah, anything that that eliminates quick and um, uh, specific instructions in a corner can be a problem. There was a right hand by Marquez toward the end of the last round. It was just perfect. And one of the things that is impressive about Marquez is he can deliver that right hand either straight or wide, whichever way is more appropriate. And he always seems to be in there versus Southpaws in important fights. Versus Pacquiao, Derek Gaynor, Freddie Norwood. Turns out Jan Dang uh, clearly doesn't have the same marquee value. Uh, nevertheless, a fight which Marquez cannot afford to slip. He wants to regain a title. You hear that wind whipping around in our microphones. Good short right hand by Marquez. Marquez uh, said something interesting to us yesterday in the fighter meeting. He's fought five or six lefties. Told us he finds lefties uh, easier uh, to fight. He's got to be in the minority. Yeah, and I don't know if that's 100% true in his case. He's had some trouble with some of them, but certainly uh, has some wins over the likes of Gaynor. Uh, the draw with Pacquiao, which some people think he could have gotten a decision. And as I said, in the last eight rounds of that fight, he, he did figure him out very well. Much less punch volume than you and I saw on the tapes we saw of Jan Day. He's been much more measured here. Yeah, he's being very cautious here. This, of course, the biggest uh, platform he has ever been on. Maybe a little bit of awe at the moment. 
trying to get warmed up. Nice body shot with a left hand, a left hook by uh, Marquez. You hear that wind kicking up again. Marquez just likes it better when the man in front of him will instigate the action. He, he's better as a counter puncher. It, it's not that he'll just throw one punch, he's a great combination puncher. He just wants his opponent to start off the action. And right here, he's doing a very good job of instigating as well. Yeah, he usually doesn't initiate the action or lead with his punches. He waits for guys to come to him, but uh, he's uh, putting on a little more pressure here than we're used to seeing. Specific about how they were going to pressure Marquez, but it hasn't materialized quite that way so far. Oh, nice uppercut. You see that? Jandé right on the chin and stunned him. has all kinds of power, we know that. And there's the left uppercut that stunned Jean Dang. You normally don't throw that punch from that far out and get away with it, Marquez did. And from this point on, the power punching, not just to the head, but the body. There's the left hook to the body by Marquez. How smart of him to work the body as well as the head in this instance. And he landed some wicked shots. And then the knockdown, and almost a knockout, with Jean Dang just barely beating the count will come here for, again, the left uppercut. Marquez saw that that punch worked before, used it again, and it's astonishing that got up. I am amazed that he got up. Round three. Coming up a brutal round for Jandai Marquez, looking to pick up where he left off. Boy, what an explosive attack towards the end of round two for Marquez. I think he's right. He really does think southpaws are easier. And there's a left hand to the head by Zhang a right uppercut to the chin of Zhang. Marquez countering beautifully. There was a low blow. A low blow by Zhang. They keep going, though. Boy, Zhang ripping to the body. And Marquez just ripping back. Zhang with a left hook, but on the shoulder. Low blow again by Zhang. And a warning by Jay Nady. I mean, he's on the borderline. That was low, but he's close. I think you got to give Jan Dang credit. He was in monstrous trouble, and he's throwing some big punches and landing a few here. He's got to be in, in tremendous condition to be able to withstand all this punishment and then fight on and continue and look, look pretty good here in this round. There's a left a hand by Jan Dang. He's finding home for that straight left, and, and he's a, we know he's a good body puncher. Hey! He is throwing. Time. One point. Oh, he's taking a point. One point. One point. Well, that One was point. after the second warning. Box. They're close. You know, those punches are close to the belt line, but Jane 80 thinking they're low, I guess. Usually you get two warnings, but there's another straight left hand to the jaw by Jean Dang. Oh, oh there was there. by Marquez. Yeah, there was. No warning by Jane 80 to Marquez. He let it go. So this is uh, getting really rough now. This is a very interesting round. Shen Tang hanging in. Borderline shot there. Look at Marquez and Shen Tang came through with a couple of shots of his own. Not a place for the faint of heart in that ring right now on all levels. And the uppercut of Shen Tang now, very good weapon and landing it against Marquez. And there's some, some swelling underneath the right eye of Marquez. Well, this is turning into a vicious fight. Marquez doing a very good job with his jab. That's been a, a good weapon for him. And it's Shandang coming forward. 
stalking Marquez, but this is the way Marquez fights. This is the way he likes it. Left hand to partially block. Back comes Marquez with a couple of shots. Remember, with the point taken away, this could be a two-point round. Yeah. Nice straight left hand by Zhang Marquez answers with a right. Chen is one tough customer. Well, they are letting their hands go. Yeah, he is. We told you how rough he was going into the fight, but he's living up to that. Left hand by Zhang Dang. That's been an effective punch. And he nods at Marquez. He is oozing with confidence. You can't stay standing. That you can't stop. Just keep boxing. Here is where Zhang Deng went low with that punch, and that certainly was low, and gets a, a warning from Jay Nady. And then the second one, where, uh, and that also was very low. I, in retrospect, looking at it, it was pretty darn low. So Jay Nady it takes a point away, but we should call, point out that Marquez also had a couple of low blows in that uh, round, but great action. Both men throwing a lot of home run shots. There's the straight left by Zhang Deng, and I'll tell you, he landed a lot of those, and Marquez coming back with his weapon of choice, the straight right. Well, as we said, uh, going in, it gets more exciting when Marquez has a guy Stop. coming at him. Wait a minute now. A warning from Jay Nady to Marquez. That right eye of Marquez starting yeah. to look bad. He has got a lot of swelling underneath that eye from the straight left hand. It began to swell in round two. It's now round four. And uh, Zhang Dang is trying to use it as target practice for this straight left. Oh, nice body shot by Zhang Dang with the left hand. Zhang Dang continues to come forward and swarm. And he would be making a mistake, Zhang Dang, if he didn't go to the body despite the point being taken away. It's a part of his arsenal. Dang continues to land with that left hand. He is having himself a very good round here. Led all over Zhang Dang's face. And it's coming from his nose. No blow there by Zhang Dang. Now, you know, we know that Marquez is a very good counter puncher, and you would think this would play into his hands, but the pressure that John Dang's putting on him is ineffective. Yeah, he's just leaning on him. Marquez oh, knows he's in a fight now. He knows he's got something in front of him. This is, this is a formidable guy. Good combination there by Marquez, but it doesn't stop John Dang from coming forward. He continues to march in on uh, Marquez with that right eye closing. That could become a fight. The right of Marquez and the oh, left of Zhang Dang. Oh, a straight left right on the injured eye by Zhang Dang. And that's going to damage that eye even Stop! More. Stop! Box! That's an important plot line. And of course, in between rounds, they'll get the end swell on it, try and bring that swelling down. No jab from Zhang Dang. And you know, he has a pretty good jab. We saw that in the fights we saw from him. I think that would be valuable for him to use to work his way in. Again, the left from Zhang Dang. I mean, that punch is getting in very quickly. And now to the body, Zhang Dang. Missing there with the left. He spun Stop! around by Marquez. Box! Well, his most notable fight was the one against Joan Guzman that he lost by decision. He thinks Guzman's a better fighter than Marquez. He said it all week. That is better, stronger. And he said he was going to knock Marquez out. Well, he almost got knocked out a few rounds ago by Marquez. He just got up in time. Stop! And pulled down, pulling his head down. Jay Nady warns Zhang Dang. And Zhang Dang pops Marquez with a straight left. As we head for the bell in round four, this one getting very interesting. And we'll keep a close watch on that Marquez on. And now a concerned spectator in the dressing room, the victorious Rafael Marquez, who has his fight behind him. He's now rooting on his older brother. You can't be in the ropes. There's no need to. 
A little Vaseline, please. You're closing in. No. Is the eye okay? Can you see? You need combinations. With combinations, you stand. The Zhandang left is now like a laser beam on that swollen eye from Marquez. And there you saw him land it. Very quick, and that was a counterpunch from Jean Dang. So we talk about Marquez's He's counterpunch, and Jean I'm Dang okay. can do it too. Marquez's right eye becoming a big factor. He is uh, squinting heavily right now, and it's obviously uh, bothering him. Uh, they will try everything they can do with the end swell. Round uh, five underway here in Lake Tahoe. Well, let's see if uh, Jean Dang's straight left continues to target that uh, damaged eye. And there it does. He got him right on the eye. Marquez trying to go to the body. Now, Jean Dang answers to the body himself. This is one tough kid, Jean Dang. We have not seen that left uppercut from uh, Marquez, the one that first got Jan Dang in trouble and then knocked him down earlier in the season. There it is. Thank you. Heard it. Right on cue. Very effective punch. Jan Dang just missing with that right hook. And now Marquez peppering the, the face of Jan Dang with the left jab. Take a look at the press row scoring. It's all Marquez. I've got a 38 37 for Marquez. So I have less Close. of a margin. Marquez doing some work, getting the cheers from the crowd. John Dan continuing to work to the body and hasn't gotten, he's kept his punches legal and hasn't gotten any uh, warnings or point deductions. Now he switches to righty John Dang. Let's see how this works. He can do it and has done it another time. Yeah, we mentioned that earlier. He can switch to an uh, orthodox. See if it has any effect on Normally, the fighter loses a little power when they go away from their normal style. Let's see if that happens. He just switched uh, back and nailed him with a straight left. Now he's back at righty. Jan Dang. Marquez landing with a straight right to the head. Stops Jan Dang momentarily. Marquez is doing a good job here. Those uh, punches are landing. Now Jandain back to lefty, and this has been a very good round for Marquez. He's used his jab, he's used his straight right hand. Got caught with a good left by Jandain, but for the most part, this has been a great round for Marquez. Excellent body shot by Jean Dang. And, and, and you're talking about a guy who, who can barely see it. What up, Marquez? <laughs> Jean Dang's trying to line Marquez up with that straight left, and it's an uppercut by Marquez that scored. And that's the punch that hurt Jean Dang. Straight right by Marquez. Marquez all over Jean Dang. Great round for Marquez. A little more wrestling. That's how the boxing is. You gotta put everything to it when you have a chance. You cut him already. You cut him. This is the sixth round. Yes. Okay. This is your fight. Marquez throwing excellent combinations. He is a very skilled fighter. And look at that. What was given to him was the middle, went right up the middle, and he was able to land those punches against Jean Dang. And we begin round six. You got a good look at that right eye of Juan Manuel Marquez. Despite the uh, damage to the eye, he comes off a very effective fifth round. He told us he did not look at any tapes of uh, John Dang, that he just said, I prepare. I didn't look at any tapes of him. I just prepare myself as well as I can. And 
let the chips fall where they may. Marquez says he doesn't go in with a specific strategy. He prepares himself for every possibility. One push Chandang back. Trained with three different sparring partners. One tall, one fast, and one strong. So he gets it all. Well, it's pretty much everything. He covers uh, all bases. So he's ready for anything, he says. You know, in boxing so often. Oh, great quick straight left hand by Jan Day. Mostly, yeah. though, Marquez was off, off balance. balance. In boxing, we see sometimes international fighters ranked highly who come and don't have the goods. But Jan Dang, a perfect example of somebody who does. Ranked number one in this organization, or ranked highly in this organization, and a, a fighter that has skills. Seems to be a little blood along the left eye of Jan Dang. Blood on the bridge of his nose, as you can see. There it is. Now you can see the cut on the left eyebrow. Well, we're seeing tonight that the Marquez brothers can be in very exciting and interesting matches, and it makes us want to see them more often. Yeah, the, the lighter weight classes are uh, underrated. It's exciting because now a lot of these guys uh, have power, too. It's Absolutely. Not only the skill. And we're seeing that tonight. A good straight right hand. Marquez again having a very good round here by throwing a lot of punches. Good work by Marquez. That little left uppercut is a punch that he should not avoid. And, and the big straight right. <laughs> that's not too bad either. And a right uppercut, and now that's it for the second time of the fight. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight. You okay? He's game. He's down only once in 25 fights coming in, now down twice against Marquez here tonight. He's got 30 seconds to go. And he keeps coming forward. Oh, he may think twice about that after that flurry by Marquez. Now he's staying back, but now he comes forward. Oh, he's got guts. <laughs> he's taking some monster shots by Marquez. Look at Marquez, though. He never loses his composure in a fight, ever, or gets out of his rhythm. Even when he drops a guy, he's not in a rush. He may drop again. He pushes him back with a straight right, oh, and he survives the round. Jan Dang. The combination punching of uh, Juan Manuel Marquez, impressive in, for most of this fight. And there he throws an uppercut from farther back than you would like to throw it, yet it lands perfectly, and then follows with an overhand right. And really, that was all started with the jab that was a range finder. And you see from above what he does with the jab, he uses it as a range finder, and then throws what is an unorthodox co combination, the right uppercut and the overhand right. But you can do that when you're an accurate and quick puncher. A major sense of urgency in the Zhandang corner, another 10-8 round for Marquez. Zhandang down in the second round and down in the sixth. Beautiful right uppercut and an overhand right by Marquez, putting Zhandang down in the last round. We, fortunately, it was late in the round. We talked at the beginning, Steve, about what was necessary tonight for uh, Juan Manuel Marquez. Winning was good. Winning impressively was even better to demonstrate what he is in this weight division against a very tough guy. Right now, anyway, he's winning impressively. He wants to get back in the race. Beautiful uppercut, left uppercut, and he shots. Four uppercuts by Marquez. We should point out that his fight, and there you look at the uh, the scoring, it's uh, lopsided. I have it lopsided as well. Four point win actually right now for Marquez. You know, Marquez lost to Chris John uh, in the Far East in the fight. He could easily have been given the decision. He'd like him again, and this could get him closer to it. A flurry by Marquez. He's trying to end it here, and he does. Jay Nady has stopped the fight. 
a very impressive TKO victory for Juan Manuel Marquez, and he alerts the boxing world that he is back. His brother celebrates. And they just want to make sure Jean Dang is okay. The doctor's in there checking things out. Look at the right eye of Marquez. He is now uh, going in there to make sure that Jean Dang is okay. Okay, okay, okay. No problem. Yeah. And, and it wasn't about to give it up. He is a classy guy. It's a glorious night out for the brothers Marquez. It was a superb performance, and nothing he did tonight was any better than the way he closed the show. Great body shots, a complete arsenal of punches. That's as diversified attack as you can possibly have. Body shots, uppercuts, jabs, straight right hands, nothing left out of that barrage by Juan Manuel Marquez against a very game and pretty skilled opponent. We see the work downstairs and upstairs by him. And the hand speed, very impressive. He says he feels like a 20-year-old. He looked like a 20-year-old in there because not only did he show power, he showed hand speed and combinations and all the rest of it. And when a fighter engages him, as John Dang did, he's very, very effective. Had trouble with Chris John uh, across the way because he was a boxer. But when you are anywhere within punching range for Juan Manuel Marquez, you will get this, the hand speed and the combination punching. It just was a superb effort all the way through and had to face adversity because Jan Dang did land a lot of punches and that swelling under the right eye gave Marquez an issue. And then back in the dressing room, here's the reaction of his younger brother at the time of the stoppage. Rafael Marquez celebrates his brother's victory in the main event. So amidst all of this beauty and serenity, what an explosive and brutal display by Juan Manuel Marquez. Both of these brothers had to get past gritty and pretty darn good opponents tonight to show their excellence. Let's get it up to Jimmy Lennon Jr. for the official announcement. Ladies and gentlemen, we have the time of 1 minute 13 seconds in round number 7. Our referee in charge, Jay Navy, stops the contest. He is the winner by way of technical knockout, and he is the new interim WBO featherweight champion of the world, Juan Manuel Marquez.